to my Blu-ray collection update for January and February of 2015. This one has really crept up on me. I just kind of added them all up and was like, wow, that's actually quite a lot. Um, I'll pick them up now and show you the obligatory um, stack view, I suppose. Um, but yeah, this one has just kind of come out of nowhere, really. Um, whoop, there we go. Obligatory uh, thumbnail. Oh my god! Ah. Yeah, it's just a pile of blurries. There's nothing really that special. So, um, this basically represents the last of the old um, wrestling collection sell-off that I did at the end of last year. Uh, sold most of my wrestling collection. Uh, kept quite a lot, but still sold quite a, a substantial chunk of it. And there's quite a lot of things here that I got over the past couple of weeks, even in January that I just haven't shown on the channel yet. A couple of things I have shown, and then some gifts as well that I got from uh, Rossy Boy 19 Ross uh, on YouTube if you haven't checked them out yet. Now, um, two here to start off with that are kind of a bit topical. Uh, Michael Keaton was up for the Oscar on Sunday for Birdman, and he's my favourite actor, and so I always want to get a film that he starred in. My goal one day would be to have every film he's been in, and I've seen every film he's been in, so I definitely want to own all of them. There's, there's no one film there that I think is not worth owning except for Rabbit Test, which thankfully you can't own unless you uh, really dig deep. And if you do that, then you're not really worth knowing as a human being. Anyway, this one I got recently from Amazon US for like ridiculously cheap, like $3, practically, practically giving it away. It is One Good Cop starring Michael Keaton, and it's a double pack with A Stranger Among Us starring Melanie Griffith, uh, who also starred alongside Michael Keaton in Pacific Heights. But yeah, just really random, like, uh, lower-end Michael Keaton film to be put on Blu-ray, but really happy that it has. I really liked it. It's a good uh, kind of a buddy cop movie, but it kind of changes, and yeah, I really liked it. And I'm looking forward to watching it again on Blu-ray. I'm sure this, the transfer isn't amazing or anything but it's just cool to have it in high definition and um, yeah I really liked it also stars um, Rene Russo I'm pretty sure uh, if I'm thinking of the right one because I watched all of his films <laughs> over a month long period so there was a lot of them pretty sure Rene, yeah Rene, Rene Russo um, and uh, yeah really good film the next one is one of Mike Keaton's best performances by far I uh, managed to get this for like a quid <laughs> because uh, I had a, a gift card not gift card um, discount code for the, uh, the website I got it from, and it is a Norwegian release, or a Scandinavian release, I suppose. Uh, either way, yeah, like Sweden, uh, Denmark, uh, Finland and Norway. The Merry Gentleman from 2008. This is the his only uh, film that he's directed, and he stars as an assassin who kind of forms an unlikely friendship with this woman played by Kelly MacDonald. Fantastic film, really understated, great drama. He is fantastic in it as well. Uh, and I'm, I just can't believe that it was out on Blu-ray. Uh, really cheaply, and because the picture on the website was a DVD, but the listing was Blu-ray, so I was really happy when this turned up, and it was in fact the Blu-ray. Uh, no special features, I don't think, but that doesn't matter. It's just a great, great film. Um, yeah, highly recommend that one. If you see it anywhere, pick it up, check it out. If you like Michael Keaton especially, definitely worth a look. Next up is uh, another gift from a viewer who um, isn't on YouTube, doesn't really want to be named. Um, he actually sent me... Uh, Captain America, the first Avenger steelbook, way back in 2012, I think, three years ago. And uh, he sent me a message recently, asked me if I wanted this. And, um, you know, it was hard to say no, basically, but um, very kind of him. And so, thank you once again, man. We've spoken in private messaging. Um, really nice of you. And again, he said he wanted to add to my um, Marvel steelbook collection. And this does bring it completely up to date. It is Guardians of the Galaxy. I um, was really happy to get this again. Thank you so much. A uh, great guy to send this to me, and uh, yeah, I was just surprised because I thought this was out of print. I think this is a, a European release or something um, by the text on the back. But um, let's open it up quickly and have a look at the um, the artwork. I mean, it's the same steelbook that was released around the world, pretty much, with the uh, the cassette tape uh, artwork on the front of the steelbook, which I really liked. Now, I will say, Guardians of the, Guardians of the Galaxy for me was a very good film. wasn't a amazing film, but I do really like it. Um, I think it was overrated, but I'm a big fan of it, if that makes sense. <laughs> so let's take the, uh, the old J card off. Uh, yeah, this is a really nice steelbook. It's made to look like the... Um, like a cassette tape there, like the Walkman, of course, on the spine you have... Um, which way around is it? Be that way. You have the play and the, the stop and stuff. And any of us who grew up in the 90s will be familiar with that kind of layout. And then along the back you have kind of a sticker, which I really like that idea with uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy on it there 
and uh, whoa, okay, <laughs> I have not seen the inside artwork to this, that is really cool. Very colourful, uh, very Mondo-esque in fact, if you can get that in there, uh, that's really cool. Uh, I'm really looking forward to checking out this with the commentary from James Gunn. Um, I am a fan of him, and uh, the disc is just a plain blue, like they do with the uh, Marvels. But yeah, really great, thanks again man, you know who you are, um, really appreciate this, awesome stuff. <coughs> Let's get cracking on, don't want this to be too long. Uh, this one I'm so happy to get, got this from Amazon US, it is our hospitality from Buster Keaton, in my top 20 favorite films of all time, it is fantastic, the slipcase is a little dented in places, but um, I'm just glad that it has a slipcase, you know, it's really nice, um, cardboard, and then you have the uh, the Blu-ray inside, it's just such a great film, um, can't say enough good things about it, I think it might be maybe a Buster's best film. I prefer The General, which is in my top 10 favorite films of all time, but this one, the story is so good, and the way it concludes is fantastic, and there's some great stunts, typical Buster Keaton stuff, um, but a great story as well, a really great story, and says a lot about just humanity in general, I think, while still being pretty much a, a screwball comedy, so good stuff. Uh, this one I've already shown in a video before, and I was really excited about it, it's the Buster Keaton Short Films Collection. Um, amazing, 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 amazing. There's uh, three cases on the inside. I won't bother taking them out. I've shown them in a video before, but um, yeah, there's three, three discs, three Blu-rays, and hours and hours worth of short films that Buster directed and starred in through 1920 to 1923. Basically, his golden period of two real films, and then he'd go on from 23 to about 29, I guess, another run of classic feature-length films, and this is just. It's just an embarrassment of riches. Everywhere you look, it's just, uh, it's incredible. Such a great set. So many great films. I've only watched maybe half of them so far. I'm savoring every single one, and most of them are just stellar. Absolutely fantastic. Next we have a massive cinema release. This is Nashville. Um, heard good things about this, but haven't seen it yet. Of course, I've got my huge massive cinema collection behind me. Um, yeah, looking forward to checking it out as always. I've got this. Um, from an Amazon gift card that my mum got. She got a bunch of them through uh, her bank, I think, and she gave me a £10 one, so thanks mum for that. And also with that order came Escape from New York, uh, John Carpenter film. Big John Carpenter fan. I've only seen half of this film. I can't believe it myself. I know, don't kill me. Um, but I really want to watch the rest of it and watch it from the start again, obviously. But uh, huge fan of Kurt Russell, huge fan of John Carpenter, and especially when you put the two together. Genius. Uh, next I have a Arrow Academy release, uh, this is the Mancurian Candidate, and this is kind of a Cold War uh, thriller kind of thing, and such a great cast for this one, you've got um, Frank Sinatra, Janet Leigh, and Angela Lansbury, who I'm a big fan of, I really like Angela Lansbury, she kind of reminded me of my nan when I was growing up in like bed knobs and broomsticks, and of course Murder She Wrote, um, haven't watched it yet, but really looking forward to checking it out, and it's a great release, you know, as you expect from Arrow, you know, the booklet, the reversible artwork, all that kind of stuff, and I will be doing a review of this one along with the next title, which is a Arrow video uh, release, and it is David Cronenberg's Rabid. I hadn't even heard of this one, and it sounds really interesting, uh, maybe not as extreme as I usually go for, but I'm a huge fan of The Fly, huge fan of Videodrome as well. Uh, Videodrome is that's one fucked up film, and <laughs> I'm hoping that this is kind of more of the same. Um, again, looking forward to checking it out, and I will be reviewing this one as part of the Blu-ray review coming up soon. Again, you got the Blu-ray DVD, all that good stuff. Review will be coming pretty soon for that one. This one I'm not sure if I've shown yet, but um, I ordered it from Zavi like in December, and it just didn't ship for like a whole month, and it was such a bad experience with Zavi. Really horrible customer service, but eventually it turned up. Howl's Moving Castle, Blu-ray Steelbook, another Hayao Miyazaki film. The last Hayao Miyazaki film I've yet to see, and I'm kind of just, uh, I'm not watching it. I want to watch it, but I just, I can't. I can't bring myself to watch the last Hayao Miyazaki film that I've yet to see because it'll be the end of an era and there'll be no more to look forward to. I'm kind of enjoying that period where there's still one more Miyazaki film to see, but great still book. And uh, yeah, speaking of Miyazaki, Princess Mononoke. Um, really, really love this film. I saw, this is the first Miyazaki film I saw many years ago. And... Um, I really need to rewatch it. I loved it at the time, and I'm sure I'm going to love it even more now. Really glad to have it on Blu-ray. Um, and this didn't turn up for ages, and so uh, Amazon actually offered me uh, free priority shipping with my next order, which was the 
Escape from New York and Nashville Blu-rays, which came to just under ten pounds for the both of them, <laughs> and the delivery was like uh, sixteen quid. Um, but they waved it off for me, and it turned up within two days. It was incredible. I was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> it was just uh, maddening. I know back in in the UK you get things within a day, two days, but over here in Norway to get something from Amazon UK in two days was ridiculous. But that's all thanks to this turning up later than it should have been. <laughs> Um, this one you've seen again in a video, Spaceballs, um, it was region locked unfortunately, uh, so I can't watch it, which is a real shame. At least I have it for the future and that kind of thing, but uh, otherwise uh, it's just going to be on the shelf basically. So I'll have to try and download a Blu-ray rip or something to, uh, uh, to watch it when I want to watch it, but there you go. Maybe I get the UK release, I don't know. But this does have all the special features which I don't think the UK release has, so at least I have that for the future. And I'm a huge fan of Space Wars. Uh, next are the um, the Blu-rays that Ross sent me, Rossy Boy 19. And uh, I did make a package opening video for this, but I think I deleted it by accident. So sorry, Ross. I was just going through um, videos I had on my camera, and I think I lost the opening uh, video. But the three Blu-rays that he sent me, first one's American Hustle. This is the uh, American release. Really nice slipcover. The title's embossed in gold. Really love that. Love that poster as well. We have the... Um, the actual poster of this downstairs somewhere, I got it from the cinema for free. Um, I really like this film, I think it's overrated, because I don't think it's like, people say, oh, one of the best films of 2013, amazing, five stars, uh, the best picture on the year it says on the back, but it wasn't that good for me, but I still loved it. Um, I know Ross is a big Jennifer Lawrence fan, um, I don't even know if he's seen it actually, uh, I should ask him, but um, yeah, really good film, great cast, you know, Christian Bale I thought was brilliant in this, he put on a lot of weight, which he tends to do, he tends to put on and drop a lot of weight for films, but it really worked here and he just really seemed washed up and stuff, but great performance, great cast. And yeah, this is um, locked to Region A unfortunately, so I won't be able to watch it here, but I do have a Region 3 player back home. Next one he sent was a Hitchcock film, North by Northwest, which I have not seen either. It's not in the... Um we do so that all the blurries falling down. Oh yeah, they're falling. Okay, I'll just leave it. <laughs> I have the Alfred Hitchcock uh, Masterpiece Collection. And this is not a part of it, so another classic Hitchcock film to watch. And I think there's a lot of special features as well. Documentary, commentary, loads of stuff there. A feature length career profile on Cary Grant, so lots of cool stuff. And uh, looking forward to watching a classic. And finally, this is the best one by far. It is a steelbook of John Carpenter's They Live. Love this film so much. I've only seen it once, uh, I think a couple of years ago. Roddy Piper stars in the film. I forget what his character's name is, but uh, he's there on the front there. People said that they hated the, this cover of the Steelbook. Um, I guess it's not as cool as like the um, was it Scream Factory release that America had. But I really like this original poster, so I'm glad that it's on there. The Steelbook's nice and glossy. And on the back there you've got a lot of the messages that you see in the film once he puts the shades on. And uh, the inside artwork is uh, is really cool as well. Got Ronnie Piper there, and even the disc artwork is really nice. So um, I think there's some cool special features too. There is an audio commentary with John Carpenter and Roddy Piper. Can't wait for that um, interview with John Carpenter, and uh, a few other little making of spots and stuff. So. Thanks again, Ross. Really appreciate that. Really, really nice of you to send me these. Um, again, I've thanked you um, over Facebook and stuff, but really, really awesome. Really happy to have this. Um, a John Carpenter film in steelbook form in my collection. And then three more to finish. Uh, this one I got from Amazon US with um, a gift card, and it was $6. I mean, this is a, pretty much a brand new release. $6 it was ridiculous. I ordered it when it was on sale for $6 and uh, it was out of stock so I was just waiting for it to turn up and it turned up like about three weeks after or something like that but um, didn't have the slipcover either so if anyone by any chance has a spare slipcover for this for the American one um, let me know but otherwise I guess it doesn't really matter it's still a really great film and um, I flicked through it when it, it turned up just to see what the quality was like and it looked fantastic with the different aspect ratios and everything like most Wes Anderson um, mainstream um, Blu-ray releases, not many special features, so I hope this gets released by Criterion somewhere down the line. But um, yeah, I really happy to have the Grand at Budapest Hotel, which won a fair amount of Oscars on Sunday, which is really cool. Uh, this one, I, I don't know why I didn't make a video about this, because it's quite a big a big release pretty much um, for 2015. And there's a bit of dust on it, I'm going to have to wipe it off. Yeah. This is a uh, Eureka Master Cinema release, 
and it is a steel book. It is Metropolis, the golden steel book. Oh shit! I just realised I need to enter my, <laughs> I need to enter the competition to win. There's like a gold bar that's worth like four grand with Metropolis engraved into it, and there's a, a little slip inside the steel book to enter the competition. I need to do that. I actually, want to turn the video off. <laughs> Great steel book. Um, love the look of this. You got um, I forget her name now. Uh, the woman, the main woman in the film. Uh, I did know who the actress' name was, but um, it's gone now. But yeah, uh, great artwork on the front. Um, I can show you the uh, the original release of Metropolis Ooh. from Eureka, which is a really cool uh, Art Deco style uh, landscape artwork there. And then you got the steel book. There was a steel book that looked exactly like this as well, and it's kind of the rare out of print um, massive cinema steel book which is almost impossible to get without spending silly silly money really so it's cool they re-released it in a nice gold uh, edition which looks fantastic Metropolis on the back and there is a little engraved uh, number there it was limited to 4,000 copies and this is what was it? 1,398 so that's cool although I've heard that some people have said they got like number 4,103 so I think they made a bit more than 4,000 to account for damages and stuff uh, on the inside you've got the booklet that comes with the normal release and there are two Blu-rays with this one so there's actually another Blu-ray that is not in the original release, I think it's a Blu-ray anyway yep yeah. and it features the alternate version of Metropolis which is um, Giorgio Ramoda's 80's version which is kind of like a, an edited down tinted, colorized uh, re-edit of Metropolis with lots of 80's music which I'm kind of morbidly interested to see but um, but that's a cool addition to it, so it's not just re-releasing it and just putting it out as a new steel book. There's more content in there as well, which is cool. And again, the film itself is just one of the best of all time. Finally, this is one I'm most excited about. Um, I ordered this back in December. It finally came out um, in time for Valentine's Day, although this turned up a bit, a bit after that. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, the, I don't know what it is, the... The Kimchi DVD exclusive number 19 from the Blue Collection. It's one of those like limited uh, Korean steelbooks or Asian steelbooks. There's so many of them uh, coming out now. I guess the uh, they've really kind of honed in on the, the limited edition steelbook market and are making really like um, deluxe editions, like Plain Archive, I guess, and only having a limited uh, number of them. I think this is limited to 700 copies, and there was about three. Um, <laughs> Connie, Connie has GTA 5 on, like, ready to play as soon as I stopped playing and the phone was uh, going off on the <laughs> controller. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> this is limited to 700 copies. There was also a steelbook with a lenticular cover where uh, Clementine, like, disappears as you move it. There was also, like, a full cardboard slip version. They also did a triple pack version for people who want all three. It was ridiculous, but um, I just wanted to get the, the simple steelbook edition, and I think it's brilliant. I don't want to open it, I just, it's so nice. Even this J card feels really nice. I don't know what it is about it, and I love that it has uh, Joel there, uh, played by Jim Carrey, looking up, and it curves with the J card. Um, on the back, we have uh, one of the paintings that he drew of Clementine. We have the quote that makes up the film's title, and they have like a little card here that is um, supposed to be Clementine's uh, cassette. Uh, conf not confession, what do you call it, when she's telling all the memories and stuff of Joel when she gets her memory erased of him and uh, it's kind of like a card with the uh, it says how many it is, number 570 of 700 um, inside this there is like a, a little envelope that's meant to be from the company in the film and there's like cards and booklets and little postcards and little things like that, a, a bookmark I just haven't opened it yet because I almost, it just feels too nice to open but I will open it and make a video at some point soon. I really love also the spine, which the color fades from what her hair was to from the beginning when Joel first met her to the last point you see them both in the film. So I think that's really cool. This is embossed as well, the whole title, and there's an embossed border as well. Brilliant still book, so happy to get it. It's one of my top 10 favorite films of all time. So yeah, that's um, my Blu ray update for uh, January and February. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed. Um, Tomorrow, which will be Sunday, I hope to post another episode of our uh, trip to America. The uh, trip, yes, trip for lifetime videos, uh, which will be episode nine, and I think I should be able to get the next one done in about a week or so because it's not as intensive. I think the thing was when we went to New York, 
um, for the first part of the trip. We were there for like six, six or seven days, was it? Something, Something like that. Okay. Uh, whereas everywhere else we went, like Philadelphia, Washington, Rochester, we were only there for like a day or a couple of days. In New York, we just filmed so much and did so much that it was just, it's really hard to edit and draining to edit. Whereas I think when once we start going to just hitting places one one day at a time, I think I'll be easier for me to edit them. So uh, hopefully I can get that series back on track. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next one. Really nice guy. <laughs> looks after his friends. He only chucks him about the place a couple of times on the weekend. <laughs> yeah, he's all right by me. Apart from the fact he throws cans of Colin into a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's really